Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Nastin Parasala. In today's video, we will be discussing about DBT Bed JRF examination. So many students are not that much aware about this particular examination. So in this video, we are going to see each and every detail about this particular examination. So first, who conduct this examination? So if you take a joint CSA regency net examination which is conducted by CSAR, this biotechnology eligibility test is conducted by the Department of Biotechnology. So the DBT has given the responsibility to this institute called RCB, which is a nodal agency and which is responsible for conducting the DBT BJF examination. And nowadays, every exam in India are conducted by the National Testing Agency in computer-based test. So similar to that, DBT BJF examination is also conducted by the National Testing Agency. Okay, so next we'll be seeing whether the GAT D examination or DET BAT examination is same or different. Both exams are conducted by the Department of Biotechnology and both exams are hosted in a single website called dbt.mcnta.ac.in. Since only little number of students will be applying, that's the reason why both exams are maintained in a single website. If you take this GAT B examination, it is similar to IIT JAM examination. So after clearing this GAT B examination, student can do their MSc by getting a stipend. Whereas this BET BAT examination is for those students who want to do their career in research by getting a fellowship or stipend. So this BET examination is similar to your CSA or UGC net examination. So if you want to do your PhD means you need to write this paid examination. This paid examination will be conducted only once in a year. Next we will be seeing who are eligible to write this paid examination. The bachelor's degree that are eligible to write this paid examination include BE, BTEC and MBBS. If you are a BSc or if you are BDS or if you are BPharm you are not eligible to apply. Next, the master's course which are eligible to write this examination include MSc, MTech, MBSc, and Pharma. If you are having your integrated MSc or MTech degree means you can also write this examination. And the eligible courses which are eligible to write this examination include biotechnology and life sciences courses like biomedical sciences, bioinformatics, biochemistry, biophysics, botany, chemistry, computation biology, genetics, microbiology, and zoology. Or else if you have done your master's or bachelor's degree in any other allied areas of biology or life sciences like forensic science, agriculture science means you can also also eligible to write this biotechnology eligibility test okay so first understand who can write this examination because many students are thinking only biotechnology student alone right need to write this examination it's not like that botany microbiology zoology student can also write this examination next in case if you are ill if you are waiting to write your final semester examination in the month of april or else if you are waiting for the result of final semester then you can also eligible to apply for this examination under the result awaited category next we will be seeing the minimum mark in case if you are ews candidate or obc candidate or general candidate mean in the last qualifying degree say the last Last degree which you computed is BTEC or it is MSc mean, then in that degree you should hold 16 percentage of mark. In case if you belong to AC, ST and person with disability means, you should have 55 percentage of mark. Or else in your college, if the result has been released in grade system means, then you can produce that particular equivalent grade. So in the back side of mark statement itself, they will be giving a percentage and the respective equivalent grade. So you can match in that and first know whether you are eligible or not, then apply. Next, many students will be asking how many times we can write this examination, whether there is any restriction in the number of attempts. There is no nothing information has been available regarding to attempts, but they have given age limit. If you belong to general category, EWS category means up to 28 years of age, you can write this examination. If you belong to SC, SC and person with disability or woman candidate, age relaxation is given, you can write this examination up to 33 years of age. If you are belong to OBC, MC layer means you can write this examination up to 31 years of age. Next, we will be seeing the fellowship details. So, similar to a CSA or EGC net examination, students who are clear DBT BJR examination will be getting a stipend of 31,000 per month. Along with that, you will be getting a HRA. This year, you can able to see the selection process to national level examination conducted by central government department and their agency and institution like DST, DBT, DAE. So, this BET examination biotechnology eligibility test is conducted by DBT. So, you are eligible to avail all the benefits just like a CSA or EGC net JRA fellow. So, after you have promoted to SR, you will be getting a stipend of 35,000. Again, telling you this examination is conducted one once in a year so don't forget to apply for this examination and the fellowship is valid only for a period of two years within this two year you need to register for phd or else the fellowship will be expired next you can do your phd in any indian university or any indian institution and also you can do your phd in any subject people are thinking you need to do your phd only in biotechnology it's not like that next you'll be seeing the application fee for this to write this examination if you belong to general category, OBC, MCL category, EWS category means you need to pay an application fee of 1200. 
in case if you belong to ac sc and person with disability means you need to pay an amount of 600 this is application fee next uh, uh, things that are required so try to apply from your laptop or computer system don't try to apply from your mobile number and you need to have few government identity card it might be your aadhar card passport or bank account number or voter id card or uh, uh, election card like that you need to have any government id Okay, and next you need to have a category certificate. The category certificate should be a scanned category certificate and it should be a valid one. The category certificate will be in a PDF format. Next, you should have a scanned copy of your passport size photo. The photo might be either in a colored one or black and white one. And the photo background should be white in color. And photo should be in JPG or JPEG format. They are also given a size restriction. And you should also have a signature, scanned copy of signature. Signature might be in blue color pen or black color pen. Next, you should have a scanned copy of 10 standard mark statement as a proof of data well and next you should have a scanned copy of result awaited category certificate okay next you should have a bank account details everything for doing payment of fee the fee the certificate format for almost for all things will be available in the information bulletin itself so okay this thing you can find in the annexial copy of information bulletin so till they didn't release the information bulletin for dbt bgl 2023 so once they had released i'll definitely update you so please subscribe to my youtube channel next in case if you are going to apply another obc category means then they have given a format of obc certificate if you are already having a obc certificate means then please make sure whether there is valid one or invalid one because uh, this certificate will be valid only for a period of six months for SAST also they have given a certificate format and for EWS category also they have given a certificate format. Next in case if you are going to apply the RA category means then this is a certificate format for result awaited category. You need to fill the detail and you need to get the signature either from HRD of the department or the college principal or head of the institute. You need to take the printout of this page alone and you need to get the sign along with the C. Okay, so the next while applying, they'll be asking you to select four city of choice. These four cities might be either from same state or different state, depending upon your choice. Next thing we'll be seeing the list of examination cities. Totally 56, uh, 59 cities, I think so. The exam is conducted in 59 cities. So in each state, there'll be a few four to five examination cities will be there. In each city, there'll be five to ten examination centers will be there. So in, if you take Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Kormatur, Trichy, Madurai, are the cities available. So these examination centers will be either government institute or private colleges friends so when you compile csr examination a number of examination cities very less since only little number of students alone will be writing this bet chair at examination the registration process for this examination is very simple similar to your csr registration examination friends first you need to fill your personal details after filling the personal detail in the personal detail itself they'll be asking you to set up a password so after setting up the password, just try to note down the password in notebook, friends. So after completing step one, you will be giving a unique application number, friends. So and they'll be sending you a OTP for both for your mobile number as well as email ID. You need to verify them. Next, you need to fill your education qualification details. In this way, we'll be asking you about the education details like which college you studied and what is the year of pausing and what is the result mode. So please give a valid email address and the mobile number should be your own mobile number so that they'll be sending all the documents through your mobile number. Next. <coughs> You need to upload all the certificates. So all have a scanned copy of all the certificate in a single folder. So it will be easy. After applying, try to have a scanned copy of the confirmation page. At the same time, you should have a scanned copy of your um, proof of pay fee payment. Next, when the application form will be open for uh, DBT by 2023 means in the March month, they will be open and you will be writing your examination in the month of April. So keep ready with all the document and all the certificate that I had given. DBT by January examination result will be published in category 1 and category number 2. In case if you are clear under category number 1 means you can do your PhD and for a period of PhD from the Department of Biotechnology, they will be giving you a fellowship or stipend every month. Whereas if you are clear under category number 2 means then there is no relationship between your DBT and for yourself and you need to only work as a JRF and also you can do your PhD but from the project in which you are working uh, you will be getting a stipend and you need to work only in a project that was sponsored by the department of biotechnology only in the department of biotechnology sponsored project you can work and this DBT examination is only for recruiting JRF there is no option for applying assistant professorship if you want to apply for lecture mean you need to write only CSAR EGC net examination so how many people will be applying each year means that every year 11,000 to 15,000 candidates will be applying for this examination. So last year, totally 11,771 candidates has been applied for this examination. Only few will be applying for this examination. In case if you are a CSL Life Sciences Applied Candidate or CSL Physical Sciences or CSL Chemical Sciences means just try for writing this DBT BGR examination this year. The competition level is very less. Best. Next, how many students will be awarded the fellowship? 
So with regarding to category number one, totally 275 fellowships will be awarded each year like that they have given in the information bulletin. And next with regarding to category number two, uh, next 100. So totally 100 students will be selected in a category number two. So on the whole, totally 375 students will be awarded like that they had given each year. So 275 in category one and 100 in category number two. But when I analyze the past three years result, in here you can able to see in 2020 year, totally 800 students has been selected. 520 students have been awarded with category one fellowship and 280 has been selected in category number 2. In 2021 year, totally 680 candidates has been selected. In 2022 year, totally 628 candidates has been this number is not a constant trend, so it's keep on changing depending upon the fund that a department of biotechnology is having and also some other factor. When you compare the CSA examination in the fellowship or fund issued for candidate is very less because only little number of candidates are actually appearing for the examination. That's the reason why this much uh, decrease, uh, this much lesser number of fellowship are being awarded. But if more number of students are actually appearing for the examination, then they will be definitely increase the fellowship awarded each year. Next, the examination will be conducted in a computer based test. Again, this examination is conducted by NTA similar to the CSERGC net examination. Question paper consists of two sections, section A and section B. Section A questions will be asked from general science, mathematics, chemistry, general aptitude, analytical biology and general biotechnology. And in section B questions will be asked from specific areas of biotechnology. And in section A totally 50 questions will be asked and you need to attend all the 50 questions that is no option. And each question will be carrying a 3 marks. So totally section A holds a 150 mark. And section B questions will be asked for specific areas of biotechnology. So totally 150 questions will be asked. And from that 150 questions, you need to attempt 150 questions and you can be 100 questions as choice. And same in section B also, each question will be carrying 3 marks. So totally 150 marks. The exam is for 300 marks. Total number of questions asked will be 200. From that, you need to attempt only for 100 questions. Okay. So the next question paper will be available only in English language. Question paper will not be available in the Hindi language. Next with regarding to negative marking, as I mentioned you earlier, for each correct answer you will be given 3 marks and for each wrong answer 1 mark will be reduced and regarding to unanswered and unattempted questions you will be given no marks so don't worry in section A uh, no need to attempt there is no compulsory to attempt 50 questions if you know the answer only for 30 questions you can attempt and the exam is for only conducting a shingle shift and the exam duration is 3 half that is 180 minutes and the cutoff will be released separately for category 1 and category number 2 and this is a cutoff for unanswered the cutoff for last is 186 mark out of 300 and for EWS and OBC the cutoff is 160 and for AC, ST in person with disability, the cutoff is 150. Okay. So, there will not be not much difference between category 1 cutoff and category 2 cutoff. So, this is safest mark that you should aim for clearing the DBT BGF examination. In case if you belong to general category, OBC category, EWS category, you belong to general category means you should aim for getting 200 mark out of 300 and in case if you belong to OBC category and EWS category aim for getting 180 mark out of 200, out of 300 and if you belong to AC esteemed person with disability means aim for 150 mark out of 300 already I made an analysis of past 10 years cut off everything you can watch that video and I also analyzed how many questions a student need to attempt category wise I have given how many student how many questions a general candidate need to attempt so that he can clear the examination okay so you can watch those video I made a lots of video with regarding to DVD page examination. Next is with regarding to the syllabus. Simply you can download the syllabus from the internet. If you put DVD page syllabus, you can easily download. The syllabus is also available in Regional Center for Biotechnology website. So the syllabus have 23 pages and this is a reason why many students are not attempting for this examination. So part A, they have given a syllabus for aptitude as well as general biotechnology syllabus is given. The general biotechnology syllabus is similar to a CSA license syllabus. So I already compared the CSA license syllabus along with the DVD page examination syllabus. You can watch those video for your understanding. And this is regarding to Part B. In Part B only many students are thinking that they are comparing DBT better examination with gate license examination. So they are thinking they need the they need to select few subjects in Part B. There is no option of subject selection because in gate license there is no option of selection uh, of subject. But in DBT better examination there is no need to select any subject. Since it is a biotechnology based examination, biotechnology there were many branches in biotechnology. Agriculture biotechnology, environmental biotechnology, animal biotechnology, plant biotechnology. So from all branches question will be asked from each and every branches. And after seeing this M.Tech biotechnology, biochemical engineering and industrial biotechnology, many students are thinking only those students who had completed MTech alone need to write. It's not like that. Friends, 
the syllabus has taken from the mtech biotech course mtech biochemical engineering course and industrial biotechnology course so you need you can't able to select or you can't able to skip no topic each and every topic questions will be asked but among this 23 pages if you target for studying 100 pages or else if you are come if you taken the if you use the note that you had already taken for csa license examination means you can use that particular note okay already analyze what are the topic that you need to study what are the topic you need to skip so please watch the video and this is my scorecard friends so i wrote my dbt bhif examination in the year 2020 and i had cleared my dbt bhif examination the first attempt itself and this is my marks in section a i had scored 70 marks in section b i scored 146 marks so i had left only four mark in negative marking and on the total i had skipped 216 mark out of 300 if you are the one who fed up with csa preparation or if you are thinking csa preparation is hard to clear then the alternative is to write the dbt bhif examination and the questions asked in the DBT HIF examination is also been very simple. You can use the notes that you have taken for CSA Regisinate examination. At the same time, you can <coughs> refer the past 10 years question paper for the DBT HIF examination. It is sufficient for you to clear under DBT HIF examination. So, if you still have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section so that I will be definitely clarifying you. If, thanks for watching this video. Please